beef. It's what's for dinner. Denny Hamlin got into a massive Twitter fight after midnight with one of the largest track promoters in the country. And I'm absolutely here for it. Let's go. Hi, hi, hi. Push it, push it, push it, push it. Check your bike. Hell yeah! What's the caution for? Can I not push it in? Stop anybody. Wow! Yeah! Oh, he's going. Woo! Way to go, boys. One hell of a job, man. One hell of a job. Thank you so much. Yes, I do have an Iron Man popcorn bucket. Why do you ask? Well, come on in to Shifting Gears. I am Alan Bailey. Oh, it's a juicy episode. Grab the popcorn because this might be the greatest thing to happen for NASCAR in all of 2024. And I'm not even exaggerating. We're going to break it all down. Um, What sparked this fight? Where is it coming from? The context leading into it is fascinating. But the beef, oh... Oh, it's so juicy. It is so juicy. Before we get into it, mash that subscribe button so that you come back for the next video. And of course, log on to ARNRace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. (sighs) We have other news to talk about, but I got to get to the Twitter B fight first. Well... Let's do this. Let me kind of bullet point some of the big NASCAR changes before we get into the beef. Um, Namely, a couple of announcements happened this week. A lot over at RCR, ironically. The big thing that happened this morning is the fact that United Rentals is going to be on the number 33. And uh, with Austin Hill driving over at RCR in a third RCR car for four races, at least in 2024, uh, starting at Texas next week. And I mean, we kind of saw this coming. I mean, Brett Griffin has been teasing this for, like, all season, basically, that he's going to be involved with this. And, I mean, fine. Austin Hill will be mediocre and continue to be in an RCR car. I, I, fine. I mean, yes, the Xfinity program is not bad over at RCR, but the Cup Series program is not great, let's just say. And... That combined with the other news that came out of RCR this week, the fact that Austin Dillon has a new old crew chief. Yay! Because that's the problem? Really? Well, we kind of found the exact moment over at Richmond over the weekend when Austin Dillon decided, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use Grandpappy's company and make some business decisions here. All right, planning on one stopping. It's going to be 40 more laps on these tires. 40. Question, y'all, but we got a good car no, needed. we're talking about it all right we are going to pit this time we're going to pit this time five four three two button oh, oh. okay unbelievable you call racist you gotta pay the attention oh it's our dumbass strategy every week Step more ma'am clear clear off we're indecisive. We don't know what to do. Settle down. Drive the car and focus here. It ain't doing no good talking. Just focus. And after that debacle, Jason Alexander now takes over crew chiefing duties for Austin Dillon in the three car effective immediately. Ironically, Alexander's the guy who got Austin Dillon all of his Cup Series victories. So, I mean, listen. Going back to what didn't work before is probably not going to work again. And at some point, you need to acknowledge that Austin Dillon's the problem and maybe the cars and maybe the organization and not so much the crew chief. But sincerely, best of luck to Alexander. He's in a no-win situation. Whenever you're working with the grandson of the owner of the company, you're in a no-win situation. Also, iRacing went ahead and gave us this teaser image of the new NASCAR 25 video game, this garage photo of kind of a work in progress type thing, and no real new information came out about this. We already knew that it was coming out in fall of 2025. We already knew that it was going to be for Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, PC, and mobile devices, and nothing else was announced. I'm excited. I'm anticipating this game release but I've been a NASCAR gamer since the 90s so I mean we've been through good and bad times and yeah I'd like to see a game that's comparable to NASCAR Thunder 04 but that's a lot of pressure to put on this single game but after NASCAR 21 Ignition I'm absolutely going to wait until I actually get my hands on the game and actually play it and review it myself and until then I'm gonna hold judgment. 
All right, so now that we've gotten the news out of the way, let's get to this Twitter fight because oh, it's juicy. It's juicy. Grab the popcorn. So everything kind of started yesterday when uh, the GT World Challenge cars, which is being held at Sonoma Raceway this weekend in Sonoma, California, got on track for what was supposed to be the first of their practice sessions, and they had a track walk earlier this week. And Corey Lewis, driver for that series, tweeted out this photo of the track falling apart in turn 11. We found other images of turns uh, 3 and 4 under the heavy braking zone also falling apart. Pavement workers came forward saying, yes, we did a shoddy job per the instruction of the company. So clearly Speedway Motorsports didn't do a good job and cut corners with this repave. That is a fact. That is an irrefutable fact at this point. And yeah. Denny Hamlin had something to say about that, tweeting out, When paving on a budget goes wrong, North Wilkesboro will be next. Frankly, a pretty fair tweet. I mean, both of these tracks were repaved during the offseason for the 2024 season, and we already know for a fact that clearly they missed some stuff over at North Wilkesboro when a giant sinkhole was discovered weeks before the All-Star Race. They quickly spun it into a, it was a moonshining cave, not our gross neglect of this facility and our gross oversight putting fans in danger, why do you ask? And Marcus Smith, who is the president and CEO of Speedway Motorsports, which owns over 11 of the Cup Series tracks, fired back with this. This is a great post from somebody who doesn't know all the information. Ignorance on display for the world to see. I will delete this tweet when Denny Hamlin sends me a text or gives me a call directly to ask why this is happening. I don't think Denny enjoyed being called ignorant because he shot back with guns a-blazing. You don't need to delete. We've seen your reconfig record. <sighs> Shots fired. And Hamlin brings up an excellent point. Let's look at all the track reconfiguration issues that Speedway Motorsports has had over the course of the last few years. For some reason, they decided to go ahead and repave and reconfigure Bristol when it didn't really need it in the first place. And they went through many changes and iterations in order to correct that horrible mistake. And the only reason racing at Bristol is decent anymore is because of NASCAR putting down multiple different chemical mixes onto the racetrack in order to produce decent racing. Texas Motor Speedway. Do I even need to go into detail on that? Really? Let me do it real quick. For some reason, they decided... Even though we don't have a reason to, we're going to go ahead and bulldoze turns one and two and screw it all up for no reason whatsoever. And they did. Still haven't fixed it. Then there was Kentucky. Same thing. Screwed it up for what reason again? I'm sorry, and now we don't even race at Kentucky. Way to go, guys. Then to help correct their poor attendance, poor date, and even poor on-track racing product, they went ahead and threw dirt on one of the greatest short tracks in the country, Bristol. Why? Just go to a dirt track. I'm all for going to a dirt track, but putting dirt on Bristol was a choice. Then, after all the failures, finally a decent one. The Atlanta reconfiguration that nobody wanted, that everybody was pissed that we sacrificed old Atlanta for. And admittingly, that one is the only silver lining in all of the track reconfigurations that this company has done so far. And at the moment, it's good, but what will it be like in a few years? We'll have to wait to see. Then, North Wilkesboro. They just repaved it during the offseason for the All-Star Race this coming May. However, there was a massive sinkhole on the front stretch in the front stretch grandstands. And instead of owning up saying, yeah, listen, this is an old racetrack. We neglected it for the better part of 30 years and we found some issues and we're correcting them. They came out and for some reason spun it as, look... It was a moonshining cave. It, it's history. The long rumors are there. And then about a week later, they actually showed the inside of this. And it's clearly a sinkhole that they neglected. And frankly, it could have killed some fans. So I'm really glad that they went ahead and took care of this issue. But don't spin your neglect and your lack of attention to detail of a racetrack as history. Ooh. Now, on to the current debacle, the clearly corners cut repave at Sonoma, which has me legitimately worried for the June race because the racetrack is thin in most parts of the track. And what happens when you get heavy stock cars racing through there? And what happens when the April showers bring May flowers? I don't know. 
That's alarming to really think about. Now, as of the recording and posting of this video, Sonoma Raceway officials are literally right now repaving certain areas of the racetrack, trying to get it ready for the GT World Challenge this weekend at the track. I question if it's going to be ready, and I really question the, we're going to go ahead and put down fresh asphalt, and then less than 24 hours later, we're going to put race cars on it and see what happens. Where's the logic in that? That's not a good decision, let's just say. And even though it came from Twitter and Denny Hamlin, clearly he's bringing up some extremely valid points that we really need to look at this company. Since Marcus Smith took over in 2015, they've made some pretty not great decisions, let's just say. But hey, last night Marcus was feeling a little a little feisty on Twitter, so he went ahead and shot back at Denny Hamlin, and it got very personal. Yes, we take risk. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. We've seen your attempt of the championship as well. When you have a chance, maybe you could give me some golf tips. Oh, I'm here for this. Here's a tip. Let someone else run your business before you blow everything your dad gave you. Whoa, Danny, whoa. So proud of my dad. Hall of Famer. If he had a Twitter slash X account, I don't think his comments would be family friendly. So listen here, almost NASCAR champion. You keep working at it, and one day, you'll get a big trophy. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> so spicy, I love it. <laughs> I'm all here for this. I really am. Because this is who they really are. They're kind of pulling the veil back and showing you who they really are and saying the quiet part out loud. Now, these tweets from Marcus have since been deleted, but we have the screenshots. <laughs> he didn't think we'd do that. We did that. Marcus put out a couple of more tweets that had a lot of spelling and grammar issues. I'm going to be courteous and not show you those, but instead I'll show you the one that he put up this morning. Following up on my previous post, I take a lot of pride in the dedication and hard work of our teammates put forth to make NASCAR the very best it can be, and I shouldn't let social media controversies get personal, so I deleted those posts. Denny Hamlin is a passionate driver and team owner, and I'm truly looking forward to seeing him drive for a championship this year. Our team is working hard to fix some pavement issues, Sonoma Raceway, and we will get it right. Let's keep this positive momentum going in 2024. What positive momentum are you talking about? Sincerely, because you haven't had positive momentum at all. You got extremely, extremely, extremely lucky with your Atlanta repave frankly. And the only reason it's good is arguably because of driver talent, not because of you guys reconfiguring a good racetrack. Clearly, they screwed up Sonoma. Clearly, they're trying to get it better again. We're going to find out when we go there in June if these issues get fixed. But really, looking at this Denny Hamlin versus Marcus Smith issue, clearly Marcus Smith is backpedaling and doing a little PR mending right now. Denny Hamlin has not done anything to recount or do anything to these tweets, and good for him. He's standing his ground. You just gotta love the fact that Denny Hamlin was so desperate for us to talk about anything besides his Richmond restart that he literally got into a Twitter fight with the head of one of the biggest track promoter companies on the planet right now. Like, I love that. I really do. Denny created his own drama. Go figure. But I, I want to hear from you. Where do you stand on this issue? Who was in the right? Who was in the wrong? I'm leaning towards Denny Hamlin on this one. And you see a lot of industry officials and people who work for companies who get paid by NASCAR. I mean, controlled by NASCAR. I mean, owned by NASCAR. I mean, deal with NASCAR saying, no, nobody won, uh, I don't want to pick a side, uh, I want to stay out of this, but I'm Team Denny on this one. Speedway Motorsports has screwed up a lot of racetracks. They're not maintaining their racetracks at all. They're not upgrading their racetracks fast enough, and they need to expand and put more capital and more resources into expanding and improving the at-track uh, experience for the race fans, the drivers, and the media, and everybody involved, because... I could seriously go to any one of their racetracks right now and probably find a cigarette butt in the exact same spot that it has been at for the last four years, and many people in the industry have made that exact joke and comment. 
but go ahead and leave a comment down below. Are you Team Denny or Team Marcus on this issue? And since we're there, let's go ahead and open up the comments for a little bit of hot takes. <laughs> My favorite. Let's start with this one. Road courses suck. I refuse to watch that garbage. NASCAR is oval pavement racing, or was. Well, NASCAR's been racing at Sonoma since the 80s, and they've been at the Glen since, I want to say, the 80s as well, so you haven't been watching NASCAR since the 80s? Thanks for watching this program, though. Appreciate ya. I personally don't think they should be fired, but do think they should train a bit harder for NASCAR races when they have to officiate. Why? Like, like, explain your thought process. I'm not trying to be mean here. I'm trying to be constructive. Because if I train for a job my entire life and then get to the highest form of this job and fail miserably, I'm either getting fired or demoted at the very worst. And that's what needs to happen here. We're talking about race officials missing the uh, restart at Richmond by Denny Hamlin. Listen, everybody in that control booth, I believe, should be fired. But I'll give them that. Let's not fire them because it's hard to find quality people. So let's demote them. Let's send them to the Xfinity Series and take the Xfinity Series team and move them up to the Cup Series. Period. And if they screw up again, then send them down to the Truck Series. And if they screw up there, send them down to ARCA. And if they screw up there, send them to a Cars West Tour. You see where I'm going with this? Because the NASCAR Cup Series, the highest form of racing in NASCAR, in professional stock car racing in the United States, the most popular form of motorsports in the United States, should have a higher quality of officials than the crap we saw at Richmond over the weekend. Tell me I'm wrong in the comments, I dare you. Barbie Wallace should have been suspended for a year. <sighs> This wasn't about Bubba Wallace, yet you made it about Bubba Wallace. Where did Bubba Wallace fit into anything this week? Seriously, because Kyle Larson checked up and Bubba spun him because he was racing him hard in the closing laps? What? What are you talking about? Why are you racist? Why do you hate him for the color of his skin? Why do you judge people based on the color of their skin? Get rid of your prejudice, man, and check yourself. Seriously. Is that an Invader Zim toy behind you? Eh? Yes, it is. Right there. That is Gur. Riding Zim. Riding a pig. Why do you ask? You can go ahead and leave your hot takes down below for a shot for them to end up here on the program. And while you're there, mash that subscribe button so that you come back for the next video. And of course, log on to ARNRace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. Should be a hopefully good race tonight for the Truck Series. Should be a banger, hopefully, on Saturday night. And then Sunday, well, enjoy the three-hour nap. It, it's going to be a bad race Saturday, uh, Sunday for the Cup Series. I'm sorry. The, the short track program is garbage right now in the Cup Series. Unless the tire falls off like it did at Bristol or it rains and we go ahead and turn the sprinklers on at Martinsville, nothing is going to save the race on Sunday. It's going to be a snoozer. It's going to be hard to pass. And because they go there to test so often, all of the teams have pretty extensive notebooks. So the box and the window is just shrinking over there. So... It's going to produce bad racing, period. And I love this racetrack. I hate that we're going to see bad racing on it, but it is what it is. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm going to be wrong. Uh, either way, we're going to be back on Monday to break down everything that we saw over the weekend out at Martinsville. Then next Wednesday, we're going to be talking NASCAR Xfinity Series on the Pit Pass, and then back again next Friday for another Shifting Gears. Four. This episode of Shifting Gears, I'm Alan Bailey. We'll see you at the track.